Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the differences between DECM, that is Defensive Electronic Countermeasures, and OECM, which is Offensive Electronic Countermeasures. Now in a previous video I did go into great detail about OCM as far as kind of how the different strategies and tactics involved, but this is basically answering kind of a common question that I've seen uh, more than once, especially in the forums. Basically in this game, OECM is considered basically, if you want to think about it another way, is noise jamming. You know, there's more than one kind of OECM out there, but basically what you're going to try to do is put an enormous amount of noise on a specific radio frequency, and anybody who's sensitive to that is going to be affected by that tremendous amount of noise. Usually you're going to be doing things like denying range. Of course, keep in mind when you jam somebody, you don't deny them a position, you just make yourself more obvious, which is kind of an interesting coincidence there. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and set this one up. This is a long track. This is a P40 radar, uh, 1992 particular version. Uh, the big thing to watch out, and this is going to be important for later, is that it is considered late 19. 60s technology. Simply what that means is that when we do do our fun experiments with the ECM, you're going to find out what this means and how it can affect you as far as predicting what you're going to have to do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and flip this guy on real quick. Unpause. And it shouldn't take too long to detect our target. Delightful. So we picked our little bogey up right here. Now this particular target, let me go ahead and switch teams real quick is none other than our QF-16A. This is absolutely nothing on board. As a matter of fact, if I ever go to the sensors page, you'd realize they stripped all the valuable, useful equipment right off of it, which makes it a perfect example unit for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to equip it with an OECM system on board. Again, there's a lot of different types of jammers out there. If you're using a Russian aircraft or anything kind of Soviet-based, look for any sort of thing that says like TU-16P. The P is always going to mean electronic. So let's go ahead and go over to my sensors panel here. I'm going to go to add sensor. I'm going to go ahead and filter by keyword, highlight both of these, and I'm going to go ahead and type in OECM. So now what you notice here is generic OECM is included with these little things that says advanced, and then it gives you a generation. Now if you remember, our OECM was designed to go ahead and um, block anything that's 1960s and greater. Now the further up you have as far as generation goes, the more effective the noise jamming is going to be. Remember this is OECM, not DECM. You'll see the difference in just a minute. So what I'm going to do for example here is I'm going to go ahead and grab the average one. We'll go ahead and slap that on real quick. And, you know, while we're at it, we might as well throw in the advanced one, too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing over here real quick, inherit from parent, and I'm going to turn on that OECM just to see what happens. Oop, actually, that's not going to do a very good thing for us at all. Let's flip down here. Let's flip that on real quick. And let's switch to the other side and see what the 1970s noise jamming is going to do to our fancy pants thing. So first things first, you notice that it says jammed. Second thing you're probably going to notice is that our bogey, which we had a very confident track on a moment ago, let me go ahead and remove it by pressing P, is no longer detectable. If this guy were to be looking at his radar screen right now, he'd see nothing but fuzz all over it. Now where this gets interesting is he's only effectively jammed out to a certain distance. As a matter of fact, if I tell my handy Danny F-16 here to proceed kind of along this direction, eventually the jamming, although extremely powerful, will be broken through. That's called the burn through distance for those of you who are familiar. There it is. So this particular jamming, while ultra effective at longer range, can be basically cooked right on through with our radar system once you get within a certain distance. So kind of remember that was about 20 nautical miles or so. So let's go ahead and get our QF-16, put it back where I found it, and let's show you what happens when instead of using 1970s OECM, we use 2020s OECM. So I'm going to flip that one off, I'm going to turn that one on instead. Watch this. Switch back to our red team here. Let's go ahead and drop him, because obviously we won't be able to see him because we're horribly jammed. And we'll go ahead and speed up time here. Just kind of cruising along. Keep in mind, we can't see a thing. I'm getting pretty darn close. Still can't see a thing. Ah, there it is. So in this case, we had to basically be within one nautical mile to even be able to detect it. So in this case, even though the jamming is about the same, higher quality OECM is going to result in a better distance. It's going to require a much, much closer distance for jam th well, burn and throw. So now that's OECM in a nutshell. And again, I have a video that kind of explains that in greater detail. Now let's take a look at DECM. In the real world with DECM, basically what you're doing is you're doing things to make your track unreliable. Now a lot of these old school SAM systems, in this case I'm going to be using an SA5 here, 
a lot of these old school SAM systems required very, very precise range tracking in order to reliably detonate. One of the methods they actually used for a while is they would actually design it so that the radar signal would either get too large or would get a little kind of curve on it, which would cause that gate to actually slide off. You could use systems where it would basically split your contact into multiple shapes, which would cause the range gate to pull itself off on its own. There are so many different methods to use this. Of course, you could also use the classic, I call it the space invaders method, where you create a lot of false targets and the radar operator has to predict what is the correct one and still be able to reliably engage. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves uh, one of these SA-5. This is the C model. I'm just double checking real quick because I want to make sure we're not using nuclear by accident. That looks pretty good to me. Go ahead and flip it on to radar. Look at the range on that thing. Delightful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sacrifice our uh, poor QF-16 to the cause here. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side. I'm going to go set my O doctrine here. We're going to say, just fire. I don't care. So as soon as my SA-5 goes ahead and detects that F-16, he'll have a good old SA-5 ripping out towards it and going supersonic in no time. Go ahead and order that attack myself. Uh, let's see, we're still waiting another 25 seconds. The reason why is it takes a long time to actually get a decent lock on the SA-5. The reason being is this is actually a Doppler radar and it's a continuous wave illumination radar. So it's quite a bit of a process to actually get a reliable lock on this thing. Anybody who's played with Samson before probably has a pretty familiar way of looking at it. Oh, look at that. Two missiles are on the way. And now this time, quite unusually, I'm actually going to open this up real fast, is I want to show you what the end game of this particular weapon is. This poor guy is about to get smashed. If he can get underneath that mountain, though, it might survive. Nope. Ah, this is what I want to show you. Nice. So what I want to show you here is as soon as this weapon arrived on target, this particular unit got to do its point defense. We've seen that before. In this case, it dropped off a bunch of generic chaff salvos. It actually shows you that basically, if you read down this note real quick, this is early 1970s chaff. Actually, it's an early 1970s seeker, basic chaff. The probability of success for the chaff actually working was 35%. It's actually very, very effective against an SA-5. So they rolled a 19, which meant it was successful. This time, it actually did the exact same thing. So let's watch what happens on this one. Statistically speaking, this has got to end poorly for that poor F-16 at some point. Let's see what happens here. Come on, prove my point. Interesting. So check this out. So this one actually, if you look, failed to block the missile, but the missile itself did not hit. Going to this one, again, this is incredibly fortunate. It actually succeeded, and about one third of the time, the chaff will be successful. A couple more SA-5s, and he's ducked. Remember, this one has no other DECM, and now the SA-5 is basically run out of the big stuff, so it's gonna have to switch over and quickly reload to fire again. But it kind of demonstrated my point pretty well. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reload the scenario. I'm going to take my QF-16, I'm going to go to my sensors real fast, and I'm going to add some DECM. In this case, we'll go ahead and use uh, pretty generic stuff. Uh, we'll use 1980s. Uh, that seems like a pretty good one. Throw that in there. Now, I don't have to turn the DECM on, which means I'm not going to give myself away when it is activated. So I'll go switch back to the other side real quick. Grab my SA-5. I'm just double checking. I always make the mistake of accidentally getting the nuclear one. I've done that about a million times myself. Looks good. Let's grab that one. Flip that radar on. Unpause. As soon as we see him, there he is. Set him to ace. Engage. And weapons away. Now watch what happens this time. Now remember, I haven't told that F-16 to do anything. Here they come. All right, so let's take a look at the end game this time. I'll slow down time a little bit. Now watch this. So when the actual weapon arrived to do its attack, you notice there's a new step in here that says generic DECM tried to jam SARH seeker. If you actually open this, this is the seeker on, I should say, this is the DECM on the airplane's effort, just like with the chaff, to go ahead and block the weapon. You can see that the tech is early 80s, which is better than the early 60s. It's attempting to spoof it, and you can see that its pri final probability of spoofing it was actually 620%. But here's the cool thing. You also went ahead and used chaff. So not only did you try to use your defensive ECM to block the weapon, but you also used chaff. Keep in mind, chaff is expendable. The DECM you have forever and ever and ever. You can see this weapon itself missed anyway.
Coming down here, we tried to do the exact same thing again. You can see we actually, our little jammer did not succeed. But this time, if you actually look right here, the chaff was able to block that one as well. And you can see that weapon went completely over the top. So even though our jamming didn't actually do the job, the combination of the jamming and the chaff did. Now, of course, if we were to sit here, let's go ahead and grab that aircraft one more time. Why not, right? I'm going to move you back here. I'm going to go ahead and swap that out and add a different system on here as well. Again, remember, we don't have, whoop, I don't think we need that. Now, keep in mind, we did not need to do anything special in order to tell him to use his DECM. Let's go ahead and take a look real quickly. We'll go ahead and get some nice, fancy, fancy version from the 90s. Now watch what happens. Unpause. Let's go ahead and back to this guy. Let's make a copy of this one. Let's grab the skill of this one, set it all the way up. Delightful. All right, you guys are done. I don't need you anymore. Now notice the DECM did not deny them range information. You need OECM for that. All right, it should be coming up here in just a moment. There it is. And he flew right over the top of us. Hate it when I miss. Slip that back on for a second there. I should make it a little bit simpler. There he is. <laughs> Fire. It's kind of a short range shot. It's kind of cheap. All right, let's watch what happens this time. Deleted my little message log to make things a little bit simpler. Ooh, splash. Now, but look at this. First of all, the weapon hits. Well, actually, you want to work backwards here. First of all, we fired chaff. It failed. Then our original DECM fired. It failed. Then our advanced DECM fired. It failed. Then the weapon actually connected, even though all of these particular things failed to actually block it. Statistically speaking, the more DECM you have, the less likely to actually be hit. So what are our conclusions here? First of all, the OECM is basically just going to deny position. And if you want to think about it another way, your OECM can kind of block out a whole radar sector to let other things kind of move in between it. DECM is only going to protect you if you're attacked. And that's kind of the short answer for kind of a long little demonstration here. But at the very least, you can kind of see it. Now, some of you are probably going, well, I, I kind of got what you're doing. That makes a lot more sense then. So you always want to bring DECM with you because it doesn't give you away. That's absolutely correct. So what happens when you combine the two different technologies together? That's what we're going to take a look at next. And that will be the last thing. And we'll go ahead and leave you with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, filter by keyword here. I'm going to get myself some OECM. We'll go ahead and just use uh, 19, we'll do 1990s, that's fair. We'll go get some DECM. Woo, helps if you spell it right, right? Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Oh, that one sounds good. Uh, we'll do average. Again, I'm not going to go too fancy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip on this offensive ECM. Remember, that does not affect the DECM. The DECM only fires if it is attacked. So I'm also going to grab this guy, move him over here, put him like that, and I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and get things rolling here. Turn on my radar. Oh, notice he's jammed. Makes sense, right? Get ourselves a nice solid SA-5. We'll make sure they're a very, very talented crew. Looks good. Let's go and flip on their radar, which is unbelievably powerful. Notice he's jammed too. Something worth work, uh, noting here real quickly is the fact that not every DECM can jam every frequency at the same time. As a matter of fact, a lot of these old school ECM systems are very limited in what they can actually block. You know, if it were example, we were to fire up here, we could go do weapons. We could say uh, ALQ, for example. And if you actually take a look at it, it tells you what bands this particular pod can actually defend against. If your radar is not in the same band that your jammer is connected to, you can't actually do anything to defend yourself from it. So in this case, this ANALQ119 couldn't protect you if it was a C-band radar. The other thing is also completely true. So if you got yourself this OECM pod, again, this is another example. This particular one here, this generic one, that's carried by a couple different aircraft, can't actually jam 
radars of that particular band. That was something I probably should have mentioned earlier. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our current situation. Now, you'll notice that our bogey here, we actually know roughly where that bogey is. The reason we're not confident about its position is because of the jamming. Notice the moment that I ordered my SA-5 to attack, we had a much more confident idea of where it is. And that's because that our attacking system actually flipped on its fire control radar. So now it's going to try to get a better look at it. Now the reason it's having such a difficult time and it is unable to launch is it doesn't have a clean enough picture of the target because of the OECM. If you actually come down here, it says automatic fire is not possible. Weapon is unable to engage an imprecise target. That's what that is referencing. And it's very interesting that the further away you are and the stronger you're jamming, the less likely things are going to be able to hit it. So I'm going to get a, let it get a look. There it goes. So now it has gotten close enough that the super duper powerful CW radar on this thing, continuous wave, can actually burn through that jamming, get enough illumination to actually then go ahead and fire its own weapons on board. So in this case, uh, we should be getting an engagement. Ah, we lost that again. Now this is why this is so, there it goes. We finally got into range. That was, uh, it ended up being like an unbelievable, yeah, 10 nautical miles, unbelievable. You know, people are always asking me how to beat Sam's. It's a combination effort here. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So in this case, our OECM made it so that the missed SAM system couldn't engage until it got close. And the DECM, as you can see in this particular case, was actually able to go ahead and jam the weapon so that the missile actually caused a miss. So again, using these two together is what's going to make it more effective. Just for fun, though, we'll watch this pour up. Oh, there it goes. So look at this, womp womp. Notice the OECM isn't here because that is not how that works. All right, hopefully this video is helpful. Like I said, a lot of people are asking questions about the differences and why they weren't working or why they were working. Just think of it as one more type of chaff, but you don't have to use it every time that you use it. And then OECM is just a way to kind of deny that initial target. Other than that, enjoy.